Hi there, we're going to prepare our pork saltimbocca in this lesson there. Uh, we've just prepared our braised cabbage that we're going to serve with that and also our croquette potato. So as we go along and I get the pork on the go, I'll also finish off the cabbage and finish off the croquette potato so that we can serve all those three things together. But if you want to watch the cabbage and the, um, and the croquette potatoes, just go to the YouTube video before this one, the part one. So our pork salt and buckle, we're going to use loin of pork. And for this, really, probably the best thing to do is to get a nice thick cut or reasonably thick cut pork chop and just take that little bone off the bottom, which is what I've done there. Conversely, you can just ask your butcher for a piece of loin pork or you can just have a look and you might find at the supermarket some pork fillet, something like that, as long as it's thick enough to butterfly. So I'm going to show you now what I mean by butterflying that. I've got the side there that's had the fat on it and I want to cut towards that side. So I want to open this up through the middle and I'm using my hand flat on the top for that and I'm using a nice sharp knife and I'm going towards that fat but I'm not going all the way through it. So then I can open that out as a butterfly. So I'm just making sure that I've cut at both ends of the pork so that I can open that out. So once that's opened out as a butterfly, I can now make that a little bit bigger. Because if I put my cheese inside this now, what's going to happen is the pork will shrink up and the cheese will just come out. So I want to actually beat this out a little so that the pork becomes bigger and makes a pocket that's big enough for me to hold some cheese inside it. So I've got the flat side of a meat mallet. I don't need to tenderize this, I'm only making it a larger surface area. So I don't use, need to use the side with the dimples on. If I haven't got a meat mallet, a nice clean saucepan, hit it with the bottom of the saucepan or a rolling pin, anything reasonably heavy and clean is fine. So I'm just using two pieces of baking paper there, one on the bottom, one on the top. And as I'm hitting it, the action is moving away from the surface area, probably double. It's also making the pork quite thin, so that means that this pork is going to be in a scallop that cooks quite quickly. Now if I wanted to make a pork schnitzel, this would be the perfect cut to do that with because I could now put that into my crumbs and it would cook really quickly in a fry. Okay, so I've battered that egg until I've got a nice thin piece of meat there. I'm going to keep this paper to use this for when I put this in the oven in a second. And I've got some mozzarella cheese here, so my mozzarella cheese I'm going to put right in the centre of that there. And any little holes I'm going to patch those up to make sure that the cheese stays in there. And then I'm going to fold the top of that over so that there's a little bit of lip there and that will help that stay together. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to actually put some herbs and some parma ham around that. So I've just got some sage here, I actually picked this out of my garden this morning. So I've just kept that down in a little pot there. So this is a nice fresh sage and sage goes fantastically well with pork. You see I've just kept that damp in a little paper towel there, a bit of kitchen towel and that keeps that fresh for much longer. Just going to give that a little wash under some cold water. And that's my sage. So I'm going to put probably a couple of leaves of sage on this. And then I'm going to get a piece of parma ham. And depending on how big your parma ham is, you can probably use one or two pieces. So I'm just going to use one piece here. It's not cheap parma ham so you can't you obviously use too much of that. But what that's going to do is going to give us a nice salty flavour that goes 
with that port. So that's my port prepared, ready for the pan net. Okay, so I've got that ready to go. So what I've got on there is I've got my pork with my mozzarella cheese inside. I've got my little leaves of sage kept in place by the parma ham and the parma ham or prosciutto wrapped around the pork to keep that together. Okay, so that's the prep for my pork salt in bocca. So I'm going to get my pan ready for this. hot so that I can get a little bit of colour on my salt and butter when it's ready to go. I'll keep a little bit of sage back for garnish and I don't need my red board anymore so I can keep my area nice and clean by getting rid of that. And my pan there should be getting hot. So I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil in this one. I'm not going to season it with salt because the parma ham is quite salty already. I can check that at the end. But I'm also going to have a fairly salty cabbage that's got bacon in it and chicken stock. So there's plenty of salt going on on my plate. I don't really need to add any to the pork. But I will add some pepper to that closer to the time. Okay, so for my pork salt in bucket, the side that I want to go into the pan first is what we call the service side. So that's where those herbs are. That's the one that I want the customer to see. So the service side goes in first. So I'm going to have to turn that upside down very carefully and just slide that into the pan. And it should sizzle when it goes in there. Now that pan's quite hot, so now that it's reached its temperature, I can turn the pan down a little bit and what will happen there is it will maintain that same temperature. So rather than keep warming up and warming up and warming up, I'm maintaining the temperature. Now I'm going to probably cook this pork about three quarters of the way through. I could cook it the whole way in the pan and that would be fine, but for our function we're going to be doing maybe 50 of these, so we can't have 50 fry pans on the go. So what we do is we get it so that it's nearly cooked, and then we put them on the tray, and then just before our customers come in, then we can put them in the oven just to finish up the cooking process and finish melting the cheese inside. So I've got a nice, crispy looking piece of parma ham on there, and I'm just going to seal off the bottom part of that now, and then pop that into the oven. Okay, so that's my pork ready to go into the oven. I'm actually going to make a little sauce in that pan that we can... I'm going to take out some of the oil, I don't want all of it. And then we're going to put a little bit of white wine in there. Turn that back up. Burn off the alcohol. I'm going to add a little bit of chicken stock to that. A little bit of lemon juice. Make sure no kicks going there. So I want a kind of acidic cream sauce to go with this pork. And we'll obviously make this as quite a bulk amount, but I'm just making enough to one here. Very similar sauce back to the one you did in grade 11 with the garlic prawns. So I've got chicken stock, lemon juice, white wine and the pan juice is from the pork and then finished up with some cream and I'm just reducing that up a little bit so it just becomes thicker and then putting it to one side and then we'll serve that with our pork right at the end. Okay so the next thing is to cook the pork and the croquette potatoes. Now these are the croquette potatoes that we started in the video before, so they're ready to go in the fryer and I'm going to put my pork in the oven at the same time.
Okay, so we've got our combination oven on here. I've actually got that set to about 196 there. And I'm going to change the time on that now and just put that pork in there for about four minutes. So it's a nice hot oven. All I want to do now is just finish off that pork, get it so that it's cooked all the way through and melting the cheese inside. So that's our pork into the oven there. And then around here, our crumb potatoes are going to go into the basket of the deep fryer. So we've got four of these that I've made. We'll be serving three of them on the plate. And they're going to go in there now. So that's those in there and they'll, they'll probably take two or three minutes as well. Remember that the potato's cooked. So all we do in there is crisping the crumbs up and then, um, and then getting some colour on them. So that, and heating them through as well. So at this stage now we can get back to our section over here. And check our cabbage. Okay, so this is the cabbage that we started earlier in the video before. And the, it's a shame that you can't actually smell that because the smells coming off the cabbage are beautiful. And we've got really nice colour on that as well. So I might actually take some out. I'm going to put some chopped parsley through that first. And take some of that out and just pop it into there so that you can see how good that cabbage looks. So if you look at that there, that cabbage has got really nice colour. All the braising liquid has been absorbed by it. So now, yeah, it's not liquidy or, or runny on the plate. The cabbage is cooked through just so. It hasn't completely collapsed so that it's a mush, but it's cooked enough so there's a little bit of texture there. You can see plenty of the bacon gone through it and the onions and then the parsley to give us some colour at the end. So we've got our cabbage there ready to go onto the plate. So we're going to keep the lid on that, keep that warm. I've got my sauce ready to go on there as well. Plate ready to serve up. And I'm going to go and get those croquette potatoes and the pork out of the oven. Okay, so my sauce is completed for my pork, the cabbage is ready, the potatoes are deep fried, and the pork is on a nice hot tray, and that's ready to go as well. So now we can serve that one up, and remember, on the night of the function, you guys will do this as a production line. So we'll probably use a ring on the night for our cabbage just to keep it exactly in the right spot. I'm going to try and do my best to do that freehand now. So just make sure that we can see that well enough. So I've got a nice portion of the cabbage in the middle of the plate. And we might serve a second vegetable with this, maybe some buttered beans, something like that on the side. So I've got a nice portion of my cabbage there. Pork salt and vodka, and hopefully you've got so the customer can see the sage leaves, and then three of the croquette potatoes going on the side there, and then just that little bit of sauce. We don't want to flood this with sauce because all we're doing is we're looking just to put enough on there just to give us a nice little lemony cream flavour on the edge. 
but not something that's going to overpower the delicate taste of the pork and the sage and the mozzarella cheese inside. So that's a pork salt and bocca with braised cabbage, croquet potatoes and a little lemon cream and white wine sauce to go on top. Thanks guys.